Okay, we're going to take a look at uh, some practice fractions. Uh, this is the second video in the fractions video, so in the back fractions video series that we have here. So if you haven't watched the first one, you might want to go watch it. It'll show you how to deal with the fractions, because here you're actually going to practice dealing with the fractions. So it works like this. Uh, first, we'll practice the little self-test, and that is, uh, you'll pause the video now, then you'll try to work out this problem here, and then you'll restart the video, and the answer, the worked out options, will show up here. And then you'll continue that pattern through the rest of the video. Here is the answer worked out. You cannot add halves and eighths, so you have to turn the halves into eighths, and one half and four eighths are the same thing and then I simply then just add 4 plus 7, uh, that's 11, then this is an improper fraction, I divide 8 into 11, it will go one time, 3 are left over, and I'm dealing in eighths, so it's 1 and 3 eighths. If uh, I want to check myself to see if this truly does equal this, then I can then multiply 8 times 1, which is 8, add 3, 9, 10, 11, 11, eights, so it checks. Now, pause the video, try to work out these uh, problems, and then restart the video to have the problems show up here so that you can see if you got it correct. Now, pause the video and check your work against the worked out answers here. Now, pause this video and then try to work out the answers then see if the answers are here uh, when you restart that see if see how well you did now check your answers to see if you got them right now pause the video try to work out the fractions multiplication here and then pause the video again uh, restart the video, excuse me, to see the answers that will show up here and see how you did. Check your answers with the answers shown here to see how you did. Pause the video to try to solve these problems, then restart the video to see how you did. How'd you do? Check yourself. All right, try to reduce these improper fractions into proper fractions. Pause the video, try to work them out, then restart the video to see how you did. Check yourself to see how you did. If you were able to correctly solve the problems, you're okay, and you do not need to watch more of the video. The next several images will explain how you could have solved the problems. All right, here we're trying to add one-third and one-quarter, and they do not have a common denominator, so we have to get them to be a common denominator. Well, the least common denominator is 12, and you can recognize that by saying, or just multiplying 3 times 4. Uh, 3 times 4 will give you a common denominator. It might not be the least common denominator, but multiplying the denominators will give you a common denominator, and in this case it's 12. I can't think of a more uh, of a least common denominator than 12, so the number that I would multiply times 3 to equal 12 is 4, so if I multiply this times 4, I multiply this times 4. 1 third and 4 twelfths are the same value, the same amount. Then 1 fourth, I multiply 4 times 3, so that becomes 3 twelfths, then I'm now dealing with twelfths, and I simply add 4 plus 3 equals 7, and the answer is 7 twelfths. All right, now we're dealing with 1 fifth plus 3 tenths. Common denominator for these would be 10, because 10 will go into 10 once, and uh, 5 will go into 10 twice. I could multiply 5 times 10, but that's not the least common denominator. Uh, so I now should recognize that uh, 1 fifth and 2 tenths are the same value. And so I'm now dealing with tenths, 
So I simply add 2 plus 3, and that equals 5 tenths, and that reduces to 1 half. All right, let's take a look at the next one here. Um, adding quarters and eighths, three quarters and seven eighths. Well, eight is my least common denominator because eight will go into eight one time and four will go into eight twice. So if I multiply the four times two to keep the same value, I multiply the three times two. So three quarters and six eighths are the same thing. Now I simply then add six plus seven, that is thirteen. I then am dealing with an improper fraction here. How many times will 8 go into 13? It will go one time. Uh, removing 8 from 13 leaves me with 5 left over, and I'm dealing with 1 and 5 eighths. I can check myself by saying 8 times 1 plus 5 is 13, and I'm dealing with eighths, so it's 13 eighths. Okay, let's take a look at the next one here. All right. 3 fifths plus 2 fifteenths. Hmm. I could multiply 5 times 15, but that would not give me the least common denominator. I maybe could recognize that 15 will go into 15 once, and 5 will go into 15 3 times. So multiplying the 5 times 3 and multiplying the 3 times 3 gives me 9 fifteenths, and then I'll, I just add 9 plus 2 is 11, and I'm dealing with 11 fifteenths, and that's as far as that will reduce. Okay, we're now dealing with uh, subtraction, and subtraction, like addition, has to have a common denominator. So we're dealing with one third plus one quarter here. We recognized a while ago, these are the, this is the same information, I've just changed the plus sign to a negative sign, so one third becomes four twelfths, and one fourth becomes three twelfths. Now I subtract 3 from 4, or 4 take away 3 is 1 twelfth. All right, now I take a look at 1 fifth minus uh, 3 tenths. I was dealing with uh, tenths, so I turn 1 fifth into 2 tenths, just like we did in the addition. And now I have 2 take away 3, that's negative 1, and I'm dealing with tenths, so it's negative 1 tenth. All right, now we're dealing with 3 quarters minus 7 eighths. I need to change 3 quarters into eighths, just like I did with the addition, and that becomes 6 eighths, so 3 quarters becomes 6 eighths. 6 minus 7 is negative 1, and I'm dealing with eighths. All right, now we're dealing with 3 fifths minus 2 fifteenths. I can recognize that this becomes 15, and if I multiply 5 times 3 to become 15, then I multiply 3 times 3, which is 9 fifteenths. So 3 fifths and 9 fifteenths are the same thing. 9 minus 2 is 7 fifteenths. Okay, now multi multiplication with fractions, uh, much more easy than dealing with uh, the addition because the denominators don't have to be the same. I would simply multiply 1 times 3, it's 3. 4 times 4, it's 16. Multiplying 1 eighth times 7 halves, 1 times 7 is 7, 8 times 2 is 16. Uh, neither one of these can be reduced. Uh, now I'm dealing with uh, 4 fifths times 9 halves, uh, 4 times 9 is 36, uh, 5 times 2 is 10, <clears throat> I'm dealing with an improper fraction, 10 will go into 36 3 times, it will leave me with 6 tenths left over, and 6 tenths can be reduced to 3 fifths, so the answer is 3 and uh, 3 fifths. All right, nine, uh, 4 ninths times uh, 2 over 1 is 4 times 2 is 8, 9 times 1 is 9, therefore I'm dealing with 8 ninths, can't be reduced. All right, seven thirds uh, times eight thirds is seven times eight is fifty-six. Uh, three times three is nine. Uh, nine will go into fifty-six six times, and that will leave us with two ninths left over. All right, division with fractions. When you're dividing with fractions, you simply, uh, and it doesn't matter what this number is, this could be seven, uh, but which is also a fraction, seven, is a fraction of 7 over 1. We don't want to go there. All right, 
3 halves divided by 7 eighths. Uh, in order to divide by a fraction, I simply flip over or turn over this fraction, and 7 eighths becomes 8 sevenths, and we see that here. So now I'm multiplying 3 halves times 8 sevenths rather than uh, 3 halves divided by 7 eighths. Then it just simply becomes a straightforward multiplication problem. Uh, 3 times 8 is 24. 2 times 7 is 14. Uh, 14 will go into 24 one time. That will leave me with 10 left over. And that's, so it's 1 and 10 fourteenths, but this can be reduced to 5 sevenths. And you follow that same pattern on here. Now we'll take a look at improper fractions. Improper fractions are when the numerator is larger than the denominator. So we will see how many times 4 will go into 17. It will go 4 times. 4 times 4 is 16. Take away 16 from 17, and I'm left with 1, and I'm dealing with fourths. So it's 4 and 1 fourth. I can check myself by saying 4 times 4 is 16, plus 1 is 17, and I'm dealing with fourths, 17 fourths. It's the same pattern. Uh, 28 uh, thirds, 3 will go into 28 9 times. Uh, 3 times 9 is 27. 27, uh, or 28 minus 27 is 1, and so I have 1 left over, and I'm dealing with thirds. I can check myself by saying 3 times 9 is 27. 27 plus 1 is 28, and so that's the way that works. All right, your comments, questions, and suggestions are welcome, encouraged, and appreciated. You may contact me at alanmorris at yahoo.com.